maker for me and music has just been absolutely incredible. There's nowhere else like it on the planet. We get loads of different musicians in, whether they're worldwide talented or it's their first song that they've done and they're really, really nervous. And I'm very honoured to be part of that. And actually I've grown a lot more confident being able to get up and play in front of such a, a lot of supportive, loving people. It's very nurturing up here. It doesn't matter what age you are when you come to Maker, everybody is just the same person and they all love and support each other. And like I say, the music is just second to none. And whether you are new or established, you will get the same round of applause and support as every other person. My first memory of Maker was um, I was the youngest of six in a big family. One of my elder sisters was coming here on her school trip for a week, I believe. We were such a poor family, we didn't have holidays and things. You know, our holidays were playing out on the streets, I guess, with your mates and school holidays. And I have a vague memory of being really jealous. And I really wanted to go because everybody knew about Maker camping. All the schools used to go, particularly families with a very low income. Um, so yeah, that was quite a, a massive opportunity for the young people in Plymouth to have. I meet lots of old people at Maker now. I'm, I manage the campsite and I, and I love talking to everybody that comes to Maker. And there's been some really special moments where particularly a lot of old folk come up here for a walk or come camping and um, tell me their stories of how they used to come here on their school holidays and about the itchy blankets and hiding from the cold showers. Um, but having that real lovely gathering with lots of other children, not just from Plymouth, but from London and all over uh, different places, and how they had a really lovely unison and that special feeling of that they were special because they were chosen to have a holiday, which they, a lot of the children wouldn't know what the sea looked like, or sand, or a beautiful environment like this. A lot of them come from after the war, um, given some relief from the war, from the, the bomb city, and brought over here, which is a fantastic place for nature. And it's uh, absolutely bursting with love here. Um, I didn't get to come here as a child. I had some very unfortunate circumstances um, at the age of 11. I lost both my parents, and my family was scattered all over the place and split up. Um, and I ended up being put into foster care. Um, my first care home, or well, place to live, I guess, my sister, she was only 18. She took myself and my other sister under her wing. And that's where I first discovered music. Uh, my brother had a some friends, uh, they used to love rock and roll, and they took me to this place where they had rock and roll, and I was like, wow, that was my first experience of music, because I was never brought up with, there was no musicians in my family at all, so it was completely new to me. And then it started from there, my sister bought me an acoustic guitar for Christmas, so I'd spend hours and hours and days and weeks watching Top of the Pops and trying to see what chords they were playing, and basically self-taught with music. Um, and that's where my music career started. Last week when we had jam night, we all had a bit of really bad news up here. One of our favourite people who comes here, Smiley Simon, Simon Mees, um, was suddenly taken from us. And the whole community that knew him was in shock because he was a very lovely, smiley, vibrant, loving person. And we all got on really well with Simon. We got that news on the Tuesday, which is open mic night. And um, right away, um, myself and Joe Tate and pirate messages in the community. And we had a lovely memorial up here for him that evening to be able to say goodbye to him. So that was, uh, yeah, that was pretty tough, but also very beautiful what, you know, what this community does. They're like, just full of love and support and kindness, I think. Um, I first started coming to make a, um, for the festivals years ago. I came to one festival and then my lovely beautiful son Louis or Lewis whatever you want to call him um, when he was about 17 he asked me mum can I go to a festival with some friends and I was a little bit worried and he's 17 
Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, go on, behave yourself and have a great time. And um, that was his first proper love of Maker as a growing adult. And then he got himself into one of our local bands, um, Black Friday, which is sort of like a Celtic punk band. Um, as a matter of fact, they're recording next door for um, a new programme for Dawn French. So uh, this is what we do at Maker, all sorts of things going on. So Louis was brought up uh, with music and Maker, and as I said, became a very accomplished musician. Um, and we all love Louis up here. He's another part of the family. So I spent a lot more time up here and just fitted in with everybody, musically, personality-wise, with the love, love. I just can't explain how much love there is up here. Going back to my story of losing my family when I was a child, I've always been a little bit lost. Um, never felt like I've belonged anywhere. Um, but that's changed since I've come to make it. Um, and that makes it my new family, it's where I belong and I don't ever want to lose that or give it up. Coming to Maker has been a massive healing process for me. Um, in 2002 I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and then um, went into remission for 11 years. And then unfortunately in 2013 it came back with vengeance and I went through chemotherapy again and surgery and stuff. And that's when my life changed and I decided I need to do something a bit drastic. And um, I gave up what you call, what people call normal society. This is more normal to me, but Maker is, as I've said before, such a magical healing place. I, and I originally came because I wanted to write my own autobiography, which I haven't done yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, because life is always so full up here. There's so much going on and so many people to talk to. The nature, the skylarks, the wild deer that run around. It's just been a massive help to me. It's great, it's brilliant, and I love it. Now, the story goes a bit like this. What Maker gave to me through my illness was a, a new lease of life, um, but particularly this time, I think nobody expected me to survive, and to be honest, including myself at one point. And Maker's really, really helped me to, to get through that, to give me the headspace to think about what I want to do in my life. Um, and one fantastic thing that happened in 2014 when I was again um, told I was in remission, I was asked to host an open mic here in, in the Random Arms, which is smaller than the energy room. And I had no idea whatsoever, but my son gave me a massive surprise, came back from Ireland and arranged a big party. I just, I don't know, that made a huge difference to my healing, I think, to, to see how much love and support that I had here. Everybody came out of the woodwork and, and came to this party, and I'll, I'll never ever forget that, so thank you everybody that came to that party. Bless you. If I knew you from anyone If I knew you at all Would you change the way you are? Would I be asking too much? And then 
that I will be okay And if I smile, would you smile with me? Would you brighten up my day? circumstances Would you accept my advances Or would you just tell me no Cause I can't see you anymore And I can't take this awful mess I won't be the one who walks out that door And I won't put us to the test Goodbye, my friend And it's time to let go Keep you in my memory And of someone I used to know Under the circumstances Would you accept my advances Or would you just tell me no I can't see you anymore And I can't take this awful mess 